Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. They've got a choice. Sit down with one of our regular dealers. <laughs> They're going to offer you a sum of money on the table today. You're looking expectant. <laughs> I'm looking for more. If that's not enough money, you can put the same goods into an auction and hope to get a little bit more money there. Today, the show comes to you from Lincoln in Lincolnshire. There's a cracking crowd of people here. They are determined to lock horns with our dealers and then walk away with the real deal. The Lincoln locals have crowded into the dealer's den and it's straight over to Cheryl Brown to see if she has the first golden opportunity of the day. I see you've brought a collection of gold in today. Yes. Um, could you tell me a little bit about it? Um, well, those were my mother's. Which pieces? The, the two rings. All right, yes. That was a present from a friend, and the others I've just bought over the years. OK, then. And why have you brought them in today? Well, your programme's here, and it's the right time to sell. <laughs> Very good answer. <laughs> Very good answer. Um, because they're quite attractive, especially the little uh, ruby and diamond ring. You said that was your mother. Shall we yes. have a little look at that? Yes. Um, I had a look at it earlier, and it's actually 18 carat. And what I like about it, you've got a beautiful ruby in the centre um, with like, little diamonds around the outside. But she must have been a very small person because it, that, it's a very tiny yes. ring. I mean, it only just fits that part of my finger, yes. so it'd have to be sized up, I think. Right. But it's got a lovely um, look to it. The other items here, these ones here, um, these are nine carat. Yes. I've checked the eternity ring and unfortunately they're just decorative stones right. that have been put in that. And the two chains here we've got, um, this one's, uh, I think they call that Prince of Wales, and this one's a very small figaro, and they're 14 carat. So right. these, these are what are called quite modern jewellery. It's not Victorian or no. old like that. No. Um, have you got any idea of the value? A little. You have, right, OK. So we've got one, two, three, six items. So we'll start with um, 20, 40, 60, 80. Are we close? Ish. No. Not close? Not close-ish, no. There we are. 100. Yeah. Not quite. Not quite. But we're getting there. Only just. Only just. Well, I've got to bear in mind that I've got to make a little bit of profit on it. And I want you to be happy with what I offer. So I'll make one final offer then. 110. No, not really. I think I want a little birthday present for yesterday. You'd like a birthday present from yesterday? But yesterday, so, yes. So yesterday was the birthday? Yes. OK. Now, what we've got to try and do for your birthday of yesterday is try and get as much money as possible off our dealer. One ten is there with no commission. Yes. But whatever the hammer falls at in the auction house, they've got to take 15% off you. So what we're going to say now is, please, because it was our birthday yesterday, please, may I have some more? <laughs> If I take the ten away, Brenda, and if I give you the little birthday present, can I make it one twenty? So you've got your little bit more. Could you put that one back on there? As it is your birthday yesterday, I'll give you the hundred and thirty to make your day, and we'll deal then. Yes, we'll deal. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Brenda's birthday swung the deal. Let's hope she treats herself to something nice. Now it's time to survey what's going on at James Late's table. Becky, hello. Hello. I'm James. Nice Are you a surveyor? No, I'm not. No. You're not. So this is a, well, actually, a lucky find? Yeah, my partner found it, actually, at a car boot sale. Right. Yes, it cost him five pounds. Five pounds? Yes. He thought really? it looked quite interesting, so... He bought it yeah. and uh, he's been in the shed for about five years. <laughs> well, that's amazing to buy something like this for five pounds. I mean, yeah. this, is, you know, this is called a dumpy level. Oh, right. And in its yeah. time, it was made in the 30s, I guess. Um, it would have been quite an expensive instrument. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, collectors of these modern ones yeah. are very thin on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> Who is it made by? It's Let's have a uh, look here. Cook oh, and Cook. Sons. Yeah. yeah, Cook of York and London. Yeah. It's got the very late form of compass. Yeah. The earlier ones had nice 
brass compasses with silver dials. This is a much cheaper form. It looks like an aluminium dial around the outside. Yeah, yeah. Focusing there. Yeah. Spirit levels on top so you get it exactly level. It should have spare lenses yeah. and whatnot inside the box. Are they there? No, no, there's actually one lens here. Yeah. But the bits Others are missing. Are, yeah. yeah. And they usually have a pocket magnifier and a couple of little screwdrivers and things for oh, right. adjustment in the field. And of course it would have had a tripod as well. This gets mounted on a tripod okay. and you level it with these levelling screws yeah. using your, your spirit level and then away you, away you go with your... Oh. It's for simple surveying. Yeah. So he paid a fiver for it yeah. and is it your duty to make a profit? It is, I'm afraid, yes. <laughs> so is he going to take 100% profit? I Definitely didn't think so. Not. I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. There's no point in that. We'll put that away, shall we? Okay. Right. Um, I'll make you a better offer than that. 20, 40 pounds. No. No? No. No? No. Sure? Yep. Very sure. Yep. More? Definitely more. <laughs> so if I put 50 down, that's 10 times what he paid for it. Getting closer. <laughs> <laughs> I think he should be very happy with ten times his, his outlay. Oh, I don't know, he drives a hard bargain. If we if we antique dealers could make that amount of profit on every item, we we'd be retired years ago. Can I confer? You can, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. He says take the money. Yes. So we've got a deal. Yes, we have. Okay, well thanks for bringing Thank you. It. With the thumbs up from her boyfriend, it's a deal for Becky. Now over to Michael Hogman and the learned seller at his table. Jenny, that's an interesting book you bought him. Tell me about it. Uh, right, thank you. It's a book on old glass by Francis Buckley. Right. I used to collect old glass, Yeah. but I don't anymore. And it's also a very good old reference book. Yeah. And I thought somebody else might get some enjoyment from it now. It really is an interesting book. I had a quick flip through it. It's fully signed, it's limited edition, 100 of these, and this is number 20. And it's just, it just gets better throughout it. Like you say, it's a really good reference book. It, it highlights what you should be collecting and when you should be collecting it. And you've got some lovely plates in there which show you all the old English glass. And, I mean, I would say, why did you stop collecting the glass? Because I collect books. <laughs> I so collect the books old books now. Yes. So you know your stuff really, don't you? A little bit. And little you know bit. exactly how much this is worth, don't you? I've got an inkling. <laughs> yeah. Are you trying to stitch me up here? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make you an offer, yeah? Yeah. I reckon it's worth at least fifty pounds to me. Um, a little bit more. Alright, Jenny, well I will pay a little bit more. How about okay. £60. Pounds. It's quite a lot of money for a little book. It's a very yeah. nice book. It's in nice condition. It is a nice yeah. book. Let me tell you what the independent valuers and the auctioneers say. They say 70 to 100. Mm -hmm. If you wish, you could go to auction and gamble that you will get a specialist dealer who perhaps deals in glass who wants to buy it, mm -hmm. but if you don't, it might be more difficult to sell. So, I think your best bet is to try and deal with Michael. Maybe Michael will give you a little bit mm. more. I'm going to go 70 quid, okay. David, and that's it now. 70 pounds mm. seems realistic, mm. but it's your choice. Another five and a deal? No, Jenny, I've got to be honest with you. It's 70 quid, that is my deal, or it's go to the auction. There is no more from me. <clears throat> go on then, deal. Thank you. Really oh, that, that was hard I, work, Jenny, I tell yeah. you. Yeah, you're better than some <laughs> of the dealers I deal with. Coming up. So my husband dug them up. Then he brought them home to me and I said, oh my God, what have you brought home now? Will James uh, dig deep for them? Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from historic Lincoln, home of the world-famous Gothic Cathedral. There's a great crowd in the dealer's den, all hoping to get a good price for their antiques and collectibles. And it's over to Karen to see if she'll make a speedy bid for a pair of greyhounds. Hello, Tom. Welcome Hi, to the show. Thank you. And thank you for bringing me in two little doggies here. So, 
What's the story behind these? Um, well, my mum originally got them about 20 years ago at an antique fair. Um, she's always had an interest in greyhounds because we've been training greyhounds pretty much for throughout the generations. Exciting. I'm selling them on behalf of her, really. And why have you brought them along if you're a big fan of greyhounds? <laughs> well, it's like I say, we've got so many of them. You're a bit cluttered. Yeah, just sort of get a bit of a clear out of them, really. Yeah. So we've got a cast bronze greyhounds that's seated on marble bases. There's a little bit of a chip there looking at me, but we'll ignore yeah. that. Nothing too drastic. But I'm sure you know, or hopefully your mum knew when she bought them, that they were brand new then. Yeah. So we're looking within the last sort of 20 years. Um, I bet you've got an idea of what you want as well, haven't you? Yeah, a bit. I'll be honest, generally I stick to antiques or at the very least collectibles, and unfortunately these don't come under either of those. As lovely as they are, and they're, re they're really fine. Right, so... Don't shout, will you? Be very kind to me. 40 quid on the table. No, it be quite a bit more than that. Maybe. Yeah, you see, I'm basing my price on what I think I can go out today and buy mm. these for. David, I'm being, I, tell me I'm being well, mean, because I know no, I'm being I, mean. There's a, there's a difficulty <laughs> here, and that is if you're an antique dealer and you are known to buy and sell antiques, then suddenly, if you handle a reproduction, you are putting your toe in some rather delicate water, in a way, because it really undermines your credibility. Now, what we've got here is a very, very attractive and nice pair of reproduction. And thereafter, a very famous pair of dogs, I think, by P.J. Mene. 50 to 70 pounds is what the independent value will say. But, but it's your call. If you fancy a gamble, as long as you mark them clearly and sell them for what they are, there's no harm done. But you be careful out there. There are lots of good quality bronzes or bronze duh figures like these, and you can easily get caught out. Mm. But, I mean, having said all that, like David said, they're, they're wonderful items in, in their own. And mm -hmm. by all means, if you think you could get more auction, take a chance. You're not going to lose. Mm -hmm. And I'm not worried either way what you do. Okay. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So good luck, Tom. I think you Thank made you the right much. decision and I hope they do better than my mean offer. <laughs>《Will Tom's gamble pay off? Let's find out as the Greyhounds go under the gavel of auctioneer Colin Young.》They are rather nice quality. I'm not sure if you realised when you brought them along they are fairly modern. You sat down with Karen Dalmany. Uh, did she try and beguile you? <laughs> when bit. she gets young men, you know, she tries to... <laughs> she tries to get the better of them. Did she try and do that with you? She did, yeah. Ah. But it didn't come off, did it? <laughs> no. Uh, she offered you 40 quid, and what did you think about her 40 quid offer? No, I needed to get more than that. OK, the figures are here now. There's a £50 reserve on them. They're still nice-looking items. Are they going to make it? Let's find out, Tom. Uh, who's going to start me at £50? 50. 50 and bid. 50. 5 now make it at 55. Bid 60 and 5. Bid 70 and 5. Bid 80 and 5. They like them. There's bids all over the room. £100, surely. £100 bid. 110. 120. Are you listening to this, Karen? There's bids everywhere. 140 now. 140. 150. 160. 170 now. 170 if you like now. 170. They're at 170. But there's still hands everywhere. 180. 190. At 190. 195. 195. 200. 205. 210. 215. 220. 220. Have another one. 220. 225. 230 now. At 225 is all about. 225. Have you got a smile, Tom? I have. Okay. Selling that at 225. Thank you. Okay, 225. A very nice result. Once we take away the commission, it's going to leave £191. Are you happy? Very happy. What are you going to do with all that money, Tom? Well, I'm going to give most of it to my mum. Yeah. And I'm going to get some driving lessons with it. That sounds fantastic to me. On the day, the real deal was decided by people here in the room. Tom's going home with £191. Can you hear that, Karen? We were all wrong. That's the real deal. The Greyhounds certainly found the right bidders at auction. Now it's back to the dealer's den to find out what our next seller has dug up. Nice to meet you. You brought a couple of old bottles along? Yeah. Are you a bottle collector? No, I'm not, no. no. Somebody no. else is? 
No, my husband dug them up. He's Did a he? digger driver. In the garden? Oh, no, no, no. No, he's a digger driver, okay. and he was working on a, a new foundation, but he was digging out an old pond. Yeah. And he didn't realise they were down in the bottom. When he dug something up, he saw them on the side. Yeah. Wasn't too sure, thought they might be bombs or something, <laughs> so he left them on one side. Very wise. And then later on, it rained, and he could actually see that they were bottles. So they were, co they were yeah. covered in caked Take in mud, mud and stuff. yeah. 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 Then he brought them home to me and I said, oh my God, what have you brought home now? Because he was always bringing things home. <laughs> and we left them to dry. We put them in a cupboard and they've been in a cupboard for about 10 years. Oh, have they? Yeah. So you haven't got them out and played with them? No, no. no. And is this, this lump here where he hit it with the digger? I think it must it's have been, very yeah. clumsy of him. Yeah. I said that. to him, could he not be more he's, careful? He's, 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 <laughs> he's knocked about 50 quid off the value of that one. <laughs> oh dear, I hope not. <laughs> you send him back to look for the piece. I will do. So anyway, look, we've got a couple of wine bottles. Um, this is the older one. Yeah. This one is 18th century, so sort of 1760, 1770. And this one, I would think, is a bit later, 1800, 1810. Yeah. That sort of thing. Um, they're not in fantastic condition. So we've got two bits of damage. That's probably old damage. Yeah. And this one has lost quite a bit there. Now, I think some of this silver iridescence would, would, would scrape off if, if one was patient enough. Yeah. But with a bit of scraping. <coughs> Let's just have a look at that one. Yeah, really deep. Yeah. Pontil on that one. So I, I would think, yeah, I think 1800 on that one. So you want to get rid of these. Yeah. And you want me to put loads of money on the I table. I do, shed loads. <laughs> <laughs> Any idea how much you'd like for them? Uh, no, I'm no. waiting to see You're what You're going to wait and see what comes up. Comes up, yeah. Okay, well, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. You're looking expectant. I'm looking for more. <laughs> 120, 140, 160. How about that? It's not enough. Not enough? No. You're very sure of yourself. Yeah, well, it's been 10 years. That's I've 80 pounds each. Them. No. <laughs> All right, um, 180, 200. Now you're looking, now you're looking, yeah, in, you're looking, looking interested. In, yeah, I'm looking <laughs> interested now. So that's 100 pounds each. Um, well, bearing in mind they're damaged, I, I'm getting towards the, the point where I'm going to stop, but I'll put another 20 down. So 220. How about that? Um, is that okay? You're getting a second opinion? I think Is so. Is that the digger driver? That's the digger driver. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, he's saying yes. Yes. Take the money quickly before he changes his mind. <laughs> We've got a deal. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thanks Thank for you. bringing them. Back in the dealer's den, let's find out if Michael is picturing a handsome deal with this next item. Valerie, a nice little oil painting. Mm -hmm. What do you know about it? Uh, I know it's by Arturo Petrocelli. He okay. was born in 1856 in Italy. Petrocelli signed down here, isn't it? That's right, yes. yes. Yeah. And how long have you had it? Uh, 60 years plus. Really? Mm -hmm. wow. I bought it in an old junk shop when I was a child and yeah. I thought it was beautiful and it's travelled around with me God. ever since. Yeah. And why are you selling it now? Uh, because when I pop my clogs, I don't want it to go into a skip. No. I'd like other people to appreciate it. Well, that is a good thing to do with it, isn't mm -hmm. it? This sort of genre is very collectible. People like it. Mm -hmm. It's harmless, it's fun, and it's just obviously a small boy peeling an apple or mm -hmm. doing something down here, isn't he? Yeah. And it's, it's nicely executed. Mm -hmm. Nice, you know, nice strokes on it, nice paintwork, nice colours, and nice condition. Mm. And it's a canvas laid yes. onto a board. Yes. So continental painters, they used to mm -hmm. use that sort of thing quite mm -hmm. a lot, really. I quite like it. I don't think it's got a lot of value to it. I don't really know the artist off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. But um, I'll make you a bid on it. OK. 20, 40, 60, 80, say 100 pounds. No. More? More, yes. Please. Or less? Or more, more, I think more. more. Yeah. 120. No, it's a, it's a very collectible artist. How much do you think it's worth? Well, I think anything is worth only what somebody's willing to pay for it. Great answer. Mm -hmm. 120 then, okay, 130? No. no. 
About 150. No. No? No. I don't know how much I like it. Do I like it any more than 150? 160. No, I think I'd rather send it to auction. Well, we should like. reserve on it, so. Yeah, I mean, you mm -hmm. must put a reserve on things yeah. when you go to auction anyway, but it's the sort of thing that if two people like it, it can do. Yeah. You know, whatever. But I wish you luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice Thank to you. meet you. What's now? That's so it's off to auction for the Italian painting. Let's hope the bidders will be out in force today. On the dealer's day, you brought along a rather attractive oil painting of a young boy, probably Italian, uh, signed by Petrocelli. Do you remember what you paid for this as a little girl, this picture? One penny. One penny. OK. Mm -hmm. Now, on the dealer's day, you sat down with another cheeky little boy, Michael Hogburn. He offered you 160 new pounds for an old penny. It's coming up now. You turn that down, you gambled. Straight in, 100 pound bid at 100, 110 now. Make it a 100 pounds bid at 100, 110 now. 110, 120 I've got, 130, 140, 150, 150 with you, 160 with me. It's at 160. Now. 160, it's the last call. We're done and finished and selling on the book at 160. 160 pounds. Under the gavel, we've got some commission to take off. I make that £136. Mm -hmm. Now, what's your first reaction? That's fine. You sure? Absolutely. Should you have taken the, the cash from the Cockney carriages, do you think? No, I don't think so. I enjoy the auction. OK. On the day, you fancied a gamble. You thought, come on, I'll take my chances. I'll come to the auction. It did bring the same money under the gavel, but we have to award the real deal to that cheeky character, Michael Hogburn. Good on you, Michael. Four. Coming up. There we are. Don't be mean, old boy. Stick a tenner in. <laughs> Find out how much David can squeeze out of James. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Lincoln in Lincolnshire. The dealer's den has been a hive of activity and it's still going strong. Next, can Karen smell a good deal with a small box on her table? Lovely to see what you've bought in. So, before I get stuck into it, tell me a little bit about it. I don't know nothing about it, quite honestly. Uh, all I know is you me, my great grandma. That's all I know. So, it's an inherited piece? Yeah, it is, yeah. Oh, fantastic. OK. Now, this is always the most exciting part, because a box like this can have all sorts of things in it, and I never know until we open Dear it up. <gasps> Look at that. That is lovely, isn't it? Triple, triple cents. All oh, these things fit so tightly. It's such a snug fit, yeah, it isn't, isn't it? it yeah. And we've got that lovely Victorian glass with the lemon squeezer base and lovely cut top as well. Let's have a look at the stoppers. Are they all perfect, I you know? I think they're all perfect, yeah. Yeah? But the loveliest thing, I think, about the whole is the box. It's fabulous, isn't it? It's this lovely Moroccan leather and all these lovely little mother of pearl florets at the top here and diamond shapes here. And all this stud work. It's just the most gorgeous box. I love it. Have you got an idea of what you'd like to achieve for your box? Roughly. Roughly? Yeah. Roughly. All right, so let's get stuck in then. Right. 20, 40, 60, 80. 100, 120, 140, 160, 180 pounds. I'd like a, <clears throat> a little bit more. It is a nice I'm box. I'm sure you would. <laughs> lovely box, isn't it? It is a lovely box. I, I, can't, I can't even find anything to fold it. I don't think any of the stoppers are broken. No? No. I, I absolutely love it. I really love it. Right, twenty pounds, Tim, and that's a good offer now. Two hundred quid for that. Uh, yeah, I think I'm. Will you? Happy with that? Yes. Oh, I'm yeah. so pleased. Yeah, thank you so much. much. I'm thank so you. glad you didn't want to go to auction because <laughs> I right. love it. Now it's over to Cheryl to see if she'll fall in love with this greyhound brooch. You bought in a very pretty gold brooch. 
Could yeah. you tell me a little bit about it? Um, well, I bought it a fair while ago in a jeweller's. Yes. Um, and I, it just appealed to me. Can you tell me why you'd like to sell it? Um, well, I've moved and I was going through all the things when I was getting ready to move and yes. it was just laying there in a drawer in a box and I oh. thought, oh, I'll bring that on to Dickinson's that they might be interested. Oh, I see. Um, we had to look at it earlier and there is um, a hallmark on the back. It's very indistinguishable, but it's been tested so it's nine carat. Yeah. Um, very pretty thing. I don't know much about um, bar brooches, so I'll put some money down. Right. Um, and you can decide whether you'd like to take it or take it to auction. Okay, Would that be all right? Yes, yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's very pretty. I can see a market for it either as a brooch or yeah. possibly as the greyhound aspect. Right, I'm going to put £10 down because it's really not me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wanted a bit more than that. Please. I thought you might. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll put another 10 down and make it 20 but that's as far as I really want to go because something like that might be better at auction. You've got somebody that likes greyhounds, somebody like brooches. You've got two categories there. Right. But I'm going to stop at 20. OK, then I think we'll go to auction then. Yes? Yeah. You're happy to do that? Yeah. I hope you do very well and thank you for bringing it thank in Thank you today. ever so much. Thank, thank you. you. Linda has no hesitation in racing to the auction. Let's hope the gamble pays off. You brought along a rather attractive brooch and it depicts a running greyhound. And Cheryl said, I'll give you 20 quid for it. I know. Now, what did you think about the £20 offer? Well, she started with 10 and I thought, oh, goodness. And then she went up to 20 and I thought, no, I'll go with David on the auction. The race is off. They're coming out of the traps, the greyhounds now. Let's see what happens. 40 to go then, surely. 40, 40 pound a bit, 40 bit, 5 now to a C, 40 pound a bit, 5 anywhere else now. That 40 pounds be it, and 5 now to a C, 45, 45, 50, no, 45 pound a bit, 50 anywhere else now. 45, 50, surely. We're at 45, we're so close to the reserve. At 48 bit, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50 pound bid at 50. At we're at 50, we're on the reserve. At 50 pounds. Gavel's gone down at 50 pounds. Bit of commission to be taken off. I make that £42. Lovely. Were you satisfied? Yeah, yeah, because I've had my enjoyment out. It let somebody else have some enjoyment. Okay. Yeah. That's well, that's good. fair enough, isn't it? Real deal, straight out of the traps, 42 quid. Happy? Happy. We're happy. Now, let's see if James will be shaken or stirred by the next item, which has also caught the eye of David and auctioneer Colin Young. And it's time for a drink, Francis, isn't it? It certainly I could, is. I could do with one, it's could you? I could. And you've brought the right thing along. I've brought the right... Perfect. Nothing inside, I'm afraid. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, well, I've gone off it now. <laughs> Let's have a look. I've, I'm guessing it's a cocktail shaker. It is, but it's a bit more than a cocktail shaker. A bit shaker. more than a cocktail. Let's take that off. Yes. Oh, fab, look at that. Now, this is... Yeah, this is the strainer. That's right. So that's good, isn't it? Look at that. That's great. We'll put that down there. And here we've got one. Two, three. three. So it's a four. A four person. <laughs> a four person, yes. A four person. What have we got here? Oh, fantastic! A lemon squeezer. That's right. That's brilliant, isn't it? Anyway, that's that. Yes. And what have we got in here? Okay. We've got. Look at that. Three. That's fantastic. Right. Yes. It's very smart, isn't it? It is nice. Very nice. Now this is the sort of thing I can imagine. Um, taking to the races or ask us Well, or I can imagine my aunt and uncle born. doing that, yes. So does, does it belong to your aunt, well, and, aunt, aunt and uncle? Uh, they gave it to my mother as a wedding present. I think, it's, I think it's a lovely thing. Wouldn't it be fantastic if it was silver? I know, I know. We'd be looking at a lot of money then. Yes, it would. They're all, um, they're not even silver plate, it's, it's nickel plate. Is it? Mm. It hasn't had much well, use. They don't look as if they've been used, Hardly they? ever, no, no. There's very little wear. Now, Colin, when this came in, I heard the independent valuers and the auctioneer being yourself say yes. about 50 to 70 quid. Yes. Now, I had a good look at that and thought, that seems a lot of equipment there for 50 to 70 quid. Probably about 1920s, yeah. 30s. Yeah, certainly. Definitely. The bottles are in perfect condition. It all puts together as a cocktail shaker. Very comprehensive set, isn't Very. it? Do you want to revise your estimates a little bit? Uh, yeah. Certainly, 50 to 70 is where the independent mm. valuers yeah. uh, see it. Uh, 
I still don't see it realising over the 100. No. Um, but it's probably going to be creeping not far below that. OK. I think James is the right man for this. He's a stylish dealer, and I think he can sell this. Let's see what he puts on the table. Uh, incidentally, Francis, why are you selling it? Why do you want to get rid well, of it? Well, it's probably more personal to my mum than it was to me. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of more personal things of my mum's yeah. that I'm keeping. She and I can't keep everything. No, well, alas, we can't. <laughs> Let's put some money on the table. Right. Um, I'd like to offer you 20, 40, 50 pounds, Francis. What do you think about that? No. Not enough? No, that's not enough. You're quite determined about I'm that. I'm quite aren't determined you? about that, yes. It's a, shame, it's a shame it's not full up, because then we could have had a, <laughs> we could have had a deal after a drink. <laughs> um, I'll put 60 down. No, I still would like a bit more. You still want more? Mm -hmm. mm. I'm going to put another 10 on there, Francis, right. so that's 70 pounds. What do you think about that? No, I still think a I little think Dave bit, is going to advise you. More. <laughs> oh, gosh, it's fabulous, isn't it? It is. <laughs> well, it's an extraordinary thing. It is only, of course, plate. Um, the independent value has surprised me here. They have put a very modest 50 to 70 pounds on it. Now, James has come along and put the 70 pounds on, which is really at the top of their estimation. I would have to say, I just see it at more money. I might not have finished. I have the <coughs> feeling that James is the right man for this. And I think what he should do, and if I was in his position, I would try and tempt you and stop you going to the auction. But let's see what James says to you. I don't think he'll want you to go to auction. <laughs> right, James. Um, I'm going to put another 20, so you've got 80 pounds there. Right. So Would another I... five do it? A five? Do you know, I don't think I've got any fives. I'm sure you have do you take, Do you take pound coins? <laughs> 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 let's see, let's see. This is really scraping the barrel. There we are. Don't be mean, old boy. Stick a tenner in. <laughs> <laughs> the ladies asked for a fiver, David. <laughs> OK, got, I think we've, we've got, got a we've deal. We've got the deal. Excellent. We've got a deal. Fantastic. Yes, so shall we go and fill them up now? I think we ought And have to. a drink. That's right. I think we deserve it after That's that. That's right. Let's and then we can it. dance on the okay. table. Oh, brilliant, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Coming up. What you. did your dad pay for it? He paid £1.25 for it. Something tells me that this item is going to be worth a lot of money. Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal, where Michael Hobman could well have the dish of the day on his table. Adam, this is a nice piece of Oriental ware, isn't it? It is. It is very old. Tell me a little bit about it, because I'm not a great expert on this, I'll be honest right. with you. Right. It's my dad's right. item. We've had it in our possession for 22 years. OK. It was bought at a car boot sale, and it's been stored away ever since. Um, I know it's Chinese, I know it's a famille vert plate. Famille vert, that yeah. vert being green, and yeah. flowers, yeah. yes. But I know nothing else about it. I wonder if you could tell me a bit about it. This is such a specialist subject. It could be early 20th, it could be early 19th, it could even be 18th century. Mm. I'm really not 100% sure. I know that my dad took it to another expert and, okay. and had it valued, and that was in 1989. And what did the other expert think of it? He really liked it. He liked it because it was in mint condition, it hasn't yeah. been, it's not damaged at all, and he was getting quite excited about it. Did he put a date on it? This is the Yeah, he dated it to 1720. The 1720? Ka yeah, Kang Sai period, I think. You know more than me then, didn't you? King side period, OK. Mm. So what I would say to you, Adam, if that is 18th century, they are repatriating big time, this yeah. sort of stuff, I would be foolish, I would be unfair to offer you money for this, and I would recommend you take that straight to the auction, and if that goes into the auction, that is going to fly. Well, Michael's told you he's not necessarily the buyer for this, he thinks the auction is the place, and I think I agree with that. This kind of merchandise, I think, is desirable at the moment, Chinese marketplace to go back to China. There's a new emerging middle class in yeah. China. And 1,500 to 2,000 pounds is the expectation from both independent valuers and the auctioneer. A very, very nice, clean 18th century piece yeah. of Chinese porcelain. And I think that can do well in the auction. So I think that's sound advice. Take it to auction, Adam. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. Thank what you. did your dad pay for it? He paid £1.25 for it.
Michael didn't make an offer on Adam's 18th century Chinese dish, suggesting he went to the auction to find the specialist bidders. Let's see if the gamble pays off. 20. Now, Adam, on the dealer's day, you brought along a rather collectible, nice item. It was a Chinese uh, family vert supper dish. Where did it come from? Well, it came from a, a local car boot years ago. I could never find Kangxi dishes in the car boots. Years ago, did you buy it? Or no, my, no, my dad bought it. OK, what did Dad pay, pay for he it? He paid £1.25. £1.25? OK. Why have you decided at this stage, you've obviously had it for many years, yes. to part with it? Well, it's been in a cupboard for many years, it hasn't been displayed, and I'm going on a trip at the end of the year, and some of the money will go towards that. Where are you going on your trip? Uh, I went to New York. It's a bit riding on this, a trip to New York for a young guy, so let's hope we get it away. At 600, 650 now to a seat. 650, 650 on the net, 650, 700, 700 net, 700, 750 now, 700 bid, 750, 750. At 800, and 50 now, surely, 850 to a seat, 850, 900, 950 now. 900 pounds bid, any more now? Slow, bit by bit, in the room, rare, against right. the bid. internet. We're at now at 1,000 pounds, internet. At 1,000 bid, any more bids? 1,100 bid, 1,200 bid, 1,300 now, 1,400 now, 1,400, 1,400 with you. At 1,400 here 1400. in the room. 1,500, now. 1500 sure. 1,500 bid. I would have thought there'd been a bit more interest this time round, but we're on the market at 1,500. Any more bids then? We're going to sell. It sells then at 1,500 pounds on the internet. Thank you very much all for your bids. 1,500 pounds. And we've got to take off the commission, which is a chunk of, of change. That's going to leave just under £1,300, £1,275. Now, come on, what's your feeling, sir? You can say exactly as you please. Are you disappointed? No, not really. It's, it did go. It's, uh, it's a nice, rare piece. It's in it really is. good condition. Um, I don't think someone will be able to find another one in the same condition, well, maybe. With the present marketplace, with Chinese porcelain being what it is, I did expect this to go that little bit higher, 17, 18, yeah. or maybe even 2,000. But on the day, it found its level in the sale room through the internet at 1,500 pounds. Take home, 1,275. Happy? Very happy, thank you. Me too. Have a good trip. That was the real deal. Let's see if all our dealers were happy with their purchases. Just the most gorgeous box. I love it. Karen still has the scent caddy, which she adores. Michael sold the book on glass for £80. Pounds. It's quite a lot of money for a little book. I'll give you Cheryl the... sold the gold items for £180. Pounds. And James hasn't sold the glass bottles yet. It's time for a drink, Francis, isn't it? But a fellow it's dealer like fell in love with the cocktail shaker and bought it for £130 pounds to keep for himself. We've had a cracking day here in Lincoln. There's been lots of action, lots of buying, lots of selling. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. Bye for now.